Hello students, Namaste and welcome to our English lessons. In today's lesson, we are going to read a lesson from Unit 7 of your Grade 9 English book. Are you ready students? Okay, then let, let's look at the lesson on Unit 7 and today's theme for this unit is Ecology and Environment. Have you seen this? Okay, so let's look at our topic, Ecology and Environment. Let's talk about the topic first, about this theme. So what is the meaning of ecology and environment? Do you know? Yes, ecology means the relations between the living organi organisms, right? Like plants and animals and human beings and all the microorganisms that we are living together. This is the eco you know, ecosystem and when we study this, we call it ecology. Okay, students, now let's talk about environment. Can you define environment? What is environment? Can you answer this? Yes, you have written so many paragraphs and essays about this, right? Yes, environment means you clearly know that all the things, right? All the things around us. So what are the things? Can you name them? Okay, the things, yes, you know, everything that which surrounds us, they are living and non-living things. For example, you can say plants, you can say animals, you can say land and air and human beings. You can also see the picture here. So everything that we see that are around us, that surrounds us and all surrounds us, they are living as well as non-living things. These all things are come, you know, they come under environment. Yes, you know it. So we love clean environment. We love, you know, healthy environment, right? Yes. Okay, students. So today's theme, today's topic for reading lesson is this, you know, the things in our environment. So let's have a look at the you know, getting started section of our unit here, we have given a picture. Look at the picture and talk about the components of the environment. Do you know what are the components of the environment? Yes, they are. You can see in the picture here, what are these, you know, names here? Atmosphere. Yes, they are called components of environment, atmosphere. Hydrosphere, lithosphere, ecosphere, and biosphere. And do you have any idea about these, you know, components? What are these components actually in our environment? Yes, in, you know, atmosphere, we have, in atmosphere, we have air or gases, right? Gases, these are these come under atmosphere, okay? These come under atmosphere of our environment. And second thing we have, the hyd hydrosphere. Hydrosphere, that means water. We have water in our environment that comes under hydrosphere, okay? So our environment is composed with these things. And another you know, component is lithosphere. That means uh, rocks or soils, or soils, and that means lithosphere in our environment. And the next thing is ecology or ecosphere and biosphere. We can say all the combination, combination of, uh, combination of above come under ecosphere or biosphere. Okay, students? So these are the components of environment. Okay, students? So we have got the idea about environment now and what are the components, how our environment is composed. Here, we have air, we have here soil and rocks, we have here ecosphere or plants or animals or living things here and hydrosphere, that means water, and all the combination of these things are called biosphere. 
Here we have these components. Now let's talk about some questions before reading the text. Here is the uh, here are the questions. Reading first, answer these questions. Okay, students, let's answer these questions. What preparations do you and your family make as the winter season approaches? What are the preparations that we do when the winter is coming? Okay, when the cold weather, cold season is coming, what do you do? That's the question. So what do you do? Can you tell me? Yes, you, you know, you collect food, you collect or buy uh, warm clothes like sweater and jacket, you collect firewood, right? And we also collect some food and we dry, give you know, food dry for the winter. Okay, these are the preparations. So other preparations can be according to the, you know, places that you are living. So another question is, how do, how do animals and birds protect themselves from the cold? Okay, the first question was about the human beings, how we prepare for the cold uh, seasons or weather that is coming. And another question is about the animals. Then, what do the animals do for the, you know, surviving or survival during the winter? Do you know what do they do? How do they keep themselves you know, living or safe, how do they keep themselves warm during the winter? Okay, so you may wonder, you may not know very well how, do, how they prepare, how they survive. So today we will learn about this topic, okay students? So can you guess, can you guess what can they do to survive during the water, uh, winter? Okay, yes, they maybe, may, they may collect food, and store and to keep warm they may travel to another place that's right another thing that they might they might uh, you know sleep or uh, inside some hole or under tunnel or some holes and uh, some animals may get uh, to the places that are warmer for example water in the fish might go deep down the water so that they can keep themselves warm. Okay, likewise, there are so many other ways how they live in the winter. So let's, uh, we, are, we are going to look at the topic. This is the topic. How do animals spend the winter? Okay, so there are different kinds of animals. Some are living, you know, underwater. Some are living under the soil. Some are living in the mountains, some are living uh, no, in the sky and trees. Okay, so let's find out. And before that, let's talk about the words that we have here. The new words in this chapter, they are called you know, new words are unfamiliar that you might not know previously. So we have grocery. So have you heard about this word? Okay, we will talk about it. Migrate, trip, Flocks, Arctic Tern, Navigate, and Sailors, Termites, Adapt, Moss, Rodents, Hibernate. Okay, these are the words that we see here as the new words. Now we will, okay, dormant, and we will now see the meanings, okay? Let's see. Grocery, have you gone, have you been to groceries? They provide us food and vegetables, okay? The place or the shop that provides you food, materials, stuff, that is called grocery, okay? And migrate means moving from one place to the another, and that is called migrating. And trip, trip is a journey or trek to the place, another place. Flocks, okay? We have different, uh, uh, you know, birds, they travel in flocks, that means Groups of birds, okay, student. An Arctic tern is a kind of a bird that is a medium-sized bird that travels to the northern part of the you know earth uh, in the winter. Uh, and navigate. Navigate means to direct, to show the path to certain direction. Navigate. And sailors are the travelers on boats 
and termites, you know, uh, insects. They have soft body and they live on woods and they live under, you know, soils. Adapt means to fit in a situation, fit in a weather, adjust uh, or cope. And most you have seen that is a kind of plant, okay, a plant, green plant that grows in, in damp areas. Okay, student, moss is a very small, very small plant that grows in dam. And what about rodents? It's uh, an animal, okay? It's a mammal, uh, you know, that, that these are the different uh, rat family animals. They are also called gnawing uh, animal mammals, like rats and mice. And hibernate. Okay, hibernate means to remain in dormant state or in a sleeping position, sleeping state. And dormant is also the similar um, word that means being in asleep or being inactive. Okay, student, not doing anything. When animals don't have enough food in, during winter, they remain dormant. That means they remain inactive. Okay, students? Okay, these are the new words from the text that we are going to read. Now we will look at the text and read it quickly to get the idea what is there, what, uh, how the animals keep themselves surviving during the winter. Okay, students? Are you ready? Okay, let's move to the text. Okay, here we have already talked about the topic and the questions. Now we have the text here. So, the weather here gets colder. The weather gets colder. Days get, you know, get shorter. Leaves change color and fall off the trees. Soon winter is here, snow covers the ground, people live in warm houses and wear heavy coats outside. Our food comes from the grocery store, but what about animals? Okay, so what happens uh, when winter approaches? Here is the description that the days uh, get shorter and it gets colder, you know, trees have no leaves and they have different colors. You know, changes uh, in the color of the leaves of the trees, and uh, there is the snow, and people stay inside house to keep them uh, warm, and the people wear different heavy coats, heavy clothes, and we, you know, buy foods from grocery store. So, what about animals? Now we have the description in the following paragraphs. Okay, students. Okay, let's have a look at the. Now, what do the uh, animals do during the winter? What about animals? Okay, here, this is the first paragraph. The paragraph, you know, name is A here. We have A, B, C, D, E paragraphs. So we have to, you know, identify what are the main ideas in these uh, paragraphs. Okay, students. So let's find out what is here in this paragraph A. So later we will also find out the title for each of these, uh, you know, paragraphs. Okay, students. So let's look at the paragraph here. I'll read it quickly. You can also follow me and then we will talk about the ideas here. Animals do different, you know, animals do many different amazing things to get through the winter. Some of them migrate. This means they travel to another places, other places where the weather is warmer or they can find food. Many birds migrate in the autumn because the trip can be dangerous. Some travel in large flocks. For example, geese fly in noisy V-shaped groups. Other kinds of birds fly alone. How do they know when it is time to leave for the winter? Scientists are still studying this. Okay, in this paragraph, so, animals to avoid the winter, difficulties of the winter, they travel, they migrate, okay, to another place. So, migrate means going to the another place. So, birds migrate uh, during autumn season, when the winter is uh, coming near, and they travel in, in groups, not uh, single. Mostly, birds travel in groups. So, why? Because their trip can be dangerous. And uh, for, for example, geese fly in V-shaped. Look at the picture. These are the geese and they are, they have created V-shaped here. They are traveling in 
they are migrating in groups or flocks. And, and, and another mysterious thing is that how you know birds travel in the right time. How do they know it is time to travel? How do they know it is time to migrate? That is the uh, ongoing study of scientists. Okay, students. So let's look at the following, you know, lines, uh, takes from the same paragraph. Many see migration as a part of a yearly cycle of changes a bird goes through. The cycle is controlled by changes in the amount of daylight and the weather. Birds can fly very long distances. For example, the Arctic terminates close to the North Pole in the summer. In autumn, it flies south all the way to the Antarctica, way to, uh, way to Antarctica. It is spring, it returns north again. Most migrating birds travel shorter distances, but how do they find their way to the same place each year? Birds seem to navigate like sailors once did, using the sun, moon and stars for direction. They also seem to have a compass in their brain if we're using the Earth's magnetic field. Okay, here in this text, uh, what we see here is that as a cycle process, cycle means uh, doing the same thing uh, each year. The birds go to the same place, okay student? So it's a yearly cycle. In autumn, they travel to the same place. Uh, for example, Arctic Tern uh, makes its um, nests during the summer that travels to the North Pole. And each bird, I know different birds, fly to the long, you know, long distance and they go uh, and come back again uh, in, a different, in a certain time to the same place. So, you know, there, there is a, uh, there is a still very interesting thing, how they find the same place uh, you know, in a different years. So they navigate themselves by looking at sun, moon and stars like sailors do. That's the thing they do, okay? And they have also compass. That is also another thing in their brain uh, use, using the Earth's magnetic field, okay? So they find out, uh, they, uh, you know, identify, remember the same place and go to the same place in the certain time. Okay, student. So this is the uh, another interesting thing. Let's look at other parts of the same paragraph here. Other animals migrate too. Okay, not only the birds. Other animals also uh, migrate too. There are a few mammals like uh, you know some bats, caribou, elk, whales, and travel in source of food each winter. Many fish migrate. They may swim south or move into deeper, warmer water. Some insects also migrate. Certain butterflies and moths fly very long distances. For example, monarch butterflies spend the summer in Canada and the northern US. And they migrate as far south as Mexico for the winter. Most migrating insects go much shorter distances. Many like termites and Japanese beetles move downward into the soil Earthworms also move down some as far as six feet below the surface. Okay, so here is another information about different other animals than the birds that they also migrate or they also uh, you know, change their uh, you know living places during the winter. Okay, students. For example, here we have given different bats and other animals and sea animals uh, and insects. Okay, students like termites and beetles. They also change their location. Uh, some go deep down into the earth, okay? And some other, you know, migrate or they also source for food during the winter. Okay, now let's move at, at, uh, into another paragraph that is B, paragraph B. Here we have another description about the animals. Uh, let's read it and find out what is here. So some animals remain and stay active in the winter. So what do they do? This is the question and here is the answer. They remain active uh, in the winter. Some animals remain active in the winter. They must adapt to the changing weather. They should fit into the changing weather. Many make changes in their behavior or bodies. 
some changes in their you know, behavior and some changes in their you know, bodies. For example, let's see. To keep warm, animals may grow new thicker fur in the autumn. Okay, so fur they have, uh, which have normally they have in the summer that changes into thicker fur uh, in the winter. And on weasels and snowshoe rabbits, the new fur is white to help them hide in the snow. Okay, that's the changes in the bodies. Food is hard to find in the winter. Okay, let's see here another information. Some animals like squirrels uh, and uh, beavers gather extra food in the autumn and store it to uh, eat later. And some uh, like rabbits and deer spend winter looking for moss, twigs, barks and leaves to eat other animals. But, uh, you know, other animals eat different kinds of food as the seasons change. The red fox eats fruit and insects in the spring, summer and autumn. In the winter, it cannot find these things to, uh, so instead it eats small rodents. So it's about, uh, you know, food, how they manage food, okay? This paragraph is about how animals manage food during the winter. So here, look, uh, here beavers, they gather, collect uh, extra food and others, you know, you know, rabbits, deer spend looking for moss. They live in moss or twigs and leaves, okay? So these are the things about uh, the animals, uh, how they manage about food. Another paragraph is C. Here we have the description about how they live, how they manage and other animals live. So let's look at here. Animals may find winter shelter in holes. Okay, some animals live in holes, in trees or logs, under rocks or leaves or underground. Okay, so, uh, for example, some mice even build tunnels. Okay. Mice build tunnels. So, you know, have you seen the tunnels of mice? Yes. And through the snow, that tunnels can be through the snow. And to try to stay warm, animals like squirrel, mice uh, may huddle to, uh, close together. Huddling close together means coming together. They live together close uh, to keep them warm. Okay. Certain spider insects uh, may stay active if they live in forest and areas and can find food to eat. There are few insects like the winter stone fly, uh, crane fly, and snow fleas, and there are that are normally active in winter. Okay, these insects are active in winter, and also some fish may uh, stay in cold water during the uh, winter. Okay, so let's look at the another paragraph that is D. Some animals hibernate for the part of all, or all the all of the winter. So hibernate means remaining inactive, remaining in dormant state. So some animals, okay, another way to survive in the winter is hibernating, okay, sleeping or remaining uh, inactive. So this is a very special, very deep sleep and the animal's body temperature drops and its heartbeat and breath, breathing slow down. It uses very little energy. Energy in the autumn, these animals get ready for winter by eating extra food and storing it as body fat. They use this fat, this fat for energy while hibernating. Some also store food like nuts or uh, occurrence to eat later in the winter, break bears, skunks, chipmunks, and some bats hibernate. Okay, it is about how they you know manage how these animals manage to live through the winter. So the way uh, for living in the winter is hibernating, okay? Another way for living in the winter. Okay, another paragraph uh, here, we have about cold-blooded animals like fleas and frogs, snakes and turtles. These are cold-blooded animals and how they manage uh, through the winter? Let's see. Uh, so, then and these animals have no way to keep uh, warm during the winter. Snakes and many other rep reptiles find shelter in holes or burrows and spend the winter inactive or dormant. This is similar to hibernation. Uh, hibernation. Uh, and water makes a good shelter for many animals. They live inside uh, water. When the weather gets cold, they move to the bottom of lakes and ponds. They go down to the bottom of the lake uh, or bot in a ponds. Their frogs Turtles and many fish hide under rocks, logs, or fallen leaves. 
okay? And they may even bury themselves in the mud. They become dormant, cold water holds more oxygen than warm water, and the frogs and turtles can breathe by absorbing it through their skin. Okay, so this is about the cold-blooded animals like frogs, snakes, and fish. So they live under the pond uh, in the bottom, and they manage to get warm water there, and they also have more oxygen in the winter. So some uh, you know, animals like frogs they, and turtles, they get oxygen through their skin and live in there. Okay, these are the uh, you know, different ways of animals uh, for getting through the winter. Okay, students? So we have completed the reading section, and now we are moving to the exercises uh, for these reading text. Okay, students? So let's get to the exercises. Okay, students, so we have here, find the words from the text that have the following meanings. Uh, so we have here meanings and we have to now find out the words here. A soap that sells food and other things used in home. Okay, so what is the soap that sells food? We have already talked about the, you know, store that provides food, uh, that sells food. So what is that? Can you remember? Yes, you are right. Grocery. Okay, the answer for the meaning uh, from A is a grocery. So let's read the B. Related to the region around the North Pole. That is about, uh, that is from the North Pole. That means Arctic. Okay, the animals or the things from uh, North Pole is called Arctic. Another, you know, meaning is here in underground passes. That is underground passes. That is a tunnel. Okay, students. Yes. Now let's read D to find the right way to deal with the difficult situation. So it means going through that situation, getting through or get through the situation. A person who works on a ship as a member of the crew. Do you remember the person who travels on ship and boats? Is a sailor. Okay. And from F to change behavior in order to deal more successfully with a new situation. So what is the what do we call? What do we call that? We change our behavior and our bodies or we to fit the situation. That is adapt to fit, to suit the situation. And G, a very small green aloe plant. What is the small uh, plant that grows in dam that we have talked about earlier? That is moss, yes. And from H, to gather closely together, coming together, okay? So uh, the animals like mouse uh, come together. So that is huddle. Okay, students. So these are the meanings of these uh, words for these uh, meanings. And let's move to the another exercise that is matching f the title from A to E. So that is reading and matching. Uh, this you know titles like going into deep sleep, migration to new places and other ways to survive, living underground holes, adaptation to new weather. Okay, students, so we have different titles from A to E, and this A to E has got some certain descriptions like going to the deep sleep, migration, and other ways to survive and living underground holes, adaptation to new weather. Which do you think has got A? Let's look at and find out. So look at here, you can see the key answer. Okay, students, you can see the key words here. You, you can see here migrate. So it is about migration of different animals, right? Right? Yes. So we can say that A means migration to new places. So it can be the title. A can be the title, migration to new, new places. So let's look at the B here. We have to match the B. And let's look at here. We have the keyword here, adapt. So to fit the situation. So how do they do? How do they manage? So let's find out. What is here? Uh, adaptation to new weather. Okay. So B was masses to the um, uh, title adaptation to new weather. Let's look at C. What is here? Animals may find winter shelter in holes. Uh, look at here. Holes and shelter. You can see how they live. Uh, so it can be the other ways to survive. So how they, another one is migration and other ways to survive is to living under uh, our holes. And let's look at D. What is here? Okay, here we have hibernate, 
Okay, and uh, we can say here uh, in a remaining inactive, so it can be, it can be going into a deep sleep. So it means hibernation. And we have last paragraph. It's about let's see, uh, we have words like holes, shelter, burrows. Okay, reptiles living under holes. So it can be uh, look at here living in underground holes. Okay, students. So the title E suits uh, that is uh, you know suitable. Uh, the title is living in underground holes. So different reptiles live underground holes. Okay, these are the you know matching uh, the titles to the uh, given uh, letters. Okay, students. So let's move to the another exercise that is true or false. Okay, students. So we have different words, different sentences like animals wear thick coats to protect themselves from the cold. Fly in flocks help uh, birds protect themselves from the cold. And birds do not travel far to avoid the cold. Some animals collect extra food for winter and snow fleas hibernate in winter and cold water makes it difficult for some animals to breathe. Okay, we have already now got the information about how animals keep themselves warm. I think this first, you know, look at this title here, uh, sentence here. Animals wear thick coats. Do they have clothes like coats? No, they have. What do they have? Four. Yes, you are right. So it's not true sentence. So it is false. Flying in flocks helps uh, birds protect themselves from the cold. Is it? Is it keeping? Uh, is it for keeping uh, themselves from the cold? Protecting themselves from the cold? No, it is for keeping themselves safe, right? From the dangers, not from the cold, okay? So birds do not travel far to avoid the cold. So it is also, it is also false statement because birds can far, you know, travel very far, like uh, Arctic tern, okay, bird that can travel to North Pole. And some animals collect extra food for winter. This is a true statement because animals keep uh, gather, collect food. Snow fleas hibernate in winter. Look at here, snow fleas hibernate in winter. This is a false statement because uh, snow fleas and different insects, they remain active, not, uh, th th they do not remain inactive or hibernate. So it is a false statement, okay? So you can check. And cold water makes it difficult for some animals to breathe. This is also a false statement because animals, uh, the you know, cold-blooded animals like fish and frogs, they get more oxygen during the uh, winter or in cold water. So uh, they do not feel difficult to breathe. So it is a false statement. Okay, students. So this is the solution for true or false. Now we have the last exercise that is answer the following questions. So why do birds migrate in uh, groups? Do you know? So let's look at the answer in A. So they travel, they migrate in groups to because it can be dangerous, right? It can be dangerous. So you, your answer can be, your answer can be because the drip can be very dangerous. So they migrate, they travel in group for safety. Okay, students, so what controls the migration cycle of birds? So how they, uh, you know, follow the same cycle? Okay, students, they, you know, follow the same cycle uh, because they can utilize the amount of daylight and the weather. Look here, the cycle is controlled by the senses in the amount of daylight. So this can be the answer. Let's look at, let's check out here. Yes, changes in the daylight and the weather. Okay, students, that is the control system for following the same cycle. And another question is, how do birds find the same place for migration each year? Do you remember how they find? They have two, two things, right? They use sun, moon and stars for migration. And another thing is they have, uh, you know, in the brain compass, uh, like a sailor has got. So your answer can be, they use the sun, moon and stars for direction. Okay, students, so we have now a few more uh, questions here. Why do you think uh, squirrels and mice huddle to, uh, close together in winter? Why do you think they come together? Can you guess? 
In winter, why do you sit close to your friend? To keep yourself warm, right? So the answer is definitely to stay warm. You can guess it. So how do animals maintain energy during hibernation? Do you remember that they eat extra food and they you know, grow fat so that they can utilize? Yes, you can check and find out the answer that by eating extra food and storing it as body fat, okay, they maintain energy for their hibernation. So how do frogs, turtles and fish change their habitats to survive in winter? How they survive? Frogs, fish and, uh, and turtles, they survive. Look at here, you know, frog, uh, frogs, fish and snakes, they keep warm during the winter and they find shelter in holes, burrows, okay? So they live in water, uh, they you know, fire, hide under rocks, logs and fallen leaves. So these are the answers we can uh, do, okay? Let's see. Okay, so look at here. The answer is the frogs, turtles, and uh, there, are, there are frogs, turtles, and many fish hide under rocks, logs, or fallen leaves. They may even bury themselves in the mud. They become dormant. These are the answers. You can uh, arrange them to make it a better answer. I have just copied here uh, from the text. Okay, students? So these are the answers for the question and answer section. Now we have the last exercise that is the uh, you know discussion question that is e what do people do to avoid cold weather whether talk to your friends you can talk to your friends and find out how do people avoid cold weather how do you avoid cold weather so you yes light the fire you collect firewood and, and stay warm with the fire and you wear warm clothes you stay in sun okay and the sun and you also uh, sit closer and you stay inside home okay these are many different ways to keep ourselves uh, warm during the winter okay you can talk about this and you can write a paragraph or you can share with your friends okay students so this is the last exercise so we have come to the end of the today's lesson so thank you for engaging thank you for involving in this lesson and i hope you have learned okay students so keep doing the exercises and share with your friends. Okay, have a good day. Namaste.